Hello everybody, welcome back to our series of IGCSE Physics. Okay, so far we have covered three of these learning outcomes which is measuring length and volume, improving precisions in measurements and density. So today we are just going to continue with the next subtopic and also the final subtopic of this chapter which is measuring time. So, there are two types of timing devices that we will learn in this chapter which is the two stopwatches you see in the slide now. The first one being the analog stopwatch and the second one being the digital stopwatch. The primary difference between these two devices is the format in which time is measured. The digital format and the analog format. And oftentimes the digital stopwatch gives a more accurate representation of time because the device shows you the measurement and you just take it down. The analog stopwatch on the other hand gives you the measurement but requires us to read the measurements by ourselves which can sometimes lead to human errors where we read the measurements wrongly. So moving forward to measuring short intervals in time. The figure below shows a typical lab pendulum. A metal ball called a bob hangs on the end of the string and the string is clamped at the top between two wooden jaws of a retort stand. And when you pull the bob to one side and release it, the pendulum will basically just swing from side to side. So one swing happens when the pendulum bob swings from left to right and back again or vice versa and the time for one swing is considered a period and when it swings it is assumed that it swings at a steady state which means the time for one swing is the same no matter how many swings it makes but of course due to external factors such as friction and all it will eventually slow down and stop so the purpose of this experiment is actually for us to measure the time interval for one swing and oftentimes it's too short for us to measure on our own using a stopwatch and if we do, it will result in an error. So we have to calculate the average in which we take the time for a large number of swings, say 20 swings or 50 swings and then we calculate the time per swing using the formula below. So the formula below states that the average time per swing is equal to the time taken for a given number of swings divided by the number of swings. So let's say for a number of swings of 20, the time taken for the number of swings is 40 seconds. So 40 seconds divided by 20, you get 2 seconds per swing. Okay, so moving forward to example 1. A pendulum is timed first for 20 swings and then for 50 swings. So the time for both 20 and 50 swings is given. And calculate the average time per swing for both cases. So using the formula that we have learned just now, we can get for 20 swings, for example, for 20 swings, the average time per swing 17.4 seconds divided by 20 and you get 0.87 seconds per swing and for 50 swings you, you use the same formula and you use the same method and you get 0.86 seconds per swing so moving forward to example two many television sets show 25 images called frames per second and what is the time interval between one frame and the next so using the formula that we have learned is now so basically one second shows 25 frames or images so how how do we get the the time taken for one frame to show so the average time per frame is equals to one second one second for 25 frames divided by 25 and you will get 0 0.04 seconds per frame all right everybody that is all for today's lesson please do hit the like and subscribe button and also the notification icon down there so that you always be notified when any new video is up so thank you for watching and peace out